Yo, yo, welcome back to the Audio Theory Podcast. If you're new to the channel, please hit the like button as well as the subscribe button. What's good, Danny? How have you been? I've been great, dude. Been great. It's uh, Tuesday. Happy first day of November to you and everybody listening. Uh, yeah. The year is flying by, but uh, we have two months left in the year. So really excited uh, how, how that's all going to end out for all of us. Um, I mean, dude, I feel like we had a nice little uh, ego boost with some of stuff on TikTok and YouTube shorts blowing up. So I feel like whenever, I mean, again, I know you and I spoke about this in San Fran. I feel like when you and I are never like ever thinking about like stopping this, but sometimes like any, with anything in life, you get like kind of doubting yourself. With, yeah, like, yeah. You have goals and they don't, you know, it's, it's clear that they're not going to happen this year. Yeah. And then literally out of nowhere, it's like, oh, no, dude, here, here's, here's a reward for trying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, like, uh, it was not just, it was nice to see those videos do a lot of numbers. Uh, the one that you post was incredible, but even the one before that, even though the views weren't crazy, the, um, to see the, um, the engagement in the comment section was dope to see. So that was pretty cool. For sure. Yeah. And, and that particular moment, I know I texted you before, but I don't know when I heard Kanye mention that in the interview, for some reason it like got me excited. Mm -hmm. Pause. Um, and I, I think it was just because I felt like I get the sense that Lu Lupe fans are a super, super niche, like community that aren't super vocal. Right. And, and may not necessarily. Unless you give them a reason. The yeah. yeah. Unless you give them a reason. And he only mentioned Lupe briefly, but I, I, I get the, the sense that a lot of people who don't know Lupe very well think he's just like this just nerdy dude from Chicago who raps about like anime and skateboarding mm -hmm. and shit. So I, I always thought it was kind of the secret knowledge that he was like low key uh, like a gangster of sorts, but he just refused to promote that lifestyle. Right. Not necessarily being active in a gang, but just somebody who you know so may not, have not to be fucked and, with. Yeah, yeah, not to be fucked with. So in my head, I was like, you know, maybe this will be intriguing to someone who thought Lupe was just some soft, nerdy dude. And right, right, right. Because like, like, if, if we go back, to that's another, the I guess, part two of Ye's Drink Champs interview. Like the way he was talking about like uh, Big Sean, you know, uh -huh. he's not ever going to disrespect Lupe like that. Like right, there was right. like a level of like, nah, I can't do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, especially that too. Cause like he didn't even want to play around with nah. saying anything bad about Lupe, even if they, even if he may have had a reason to. Sure, sure. Yeah. So that's, that was exciting, man. But uh, how about you, bro? How's life on your end? Um, obviously, Korea is coming up in a couple of days. So PTO squared away. Like what's the plan while you're gone? Yeah, things are all right. Uh, haven't really planned or packed and done too much planning. Um, we have an idea of some things that we want to do while we're out there. Uh, we each have a couple of friends out there as well. So nice. it'll be nice. It's always nice to travel somewhere and see some people, you know, and, Oh yeah. Um, and they also can, you know, show you around and, and give you the, the download and like where to hang out, where to not go and what's not worth it, et cetera. Um, but, as you know, the there was a tragic event in Seoul. Dude, crazy. Which um Is that what you're traveling to? Yeah. So we'll be in Seoul. Um but yeah, I mean it's a tragic event and I, I guess our concern was that, you know, maybe that darkness was gonna like loom over the whole trip and things were gonna be closed and no one's gonna really, you know, be out and about. But it sounds like it'll it'll be fine, unfortunately, but obviously sad that you know we're hoping to go there with you know just a completely clear conscious of like you know we're on vacation everyone's out having fun yeah and now like it's kind of going to be in the back of your mind a, a bit at least yeah like depending yeah like being very aware of where you go and where how you move but yeah 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 dude okay not for nothing bro and i know it's almost been a year since the whole travis scott thing but like this shit can happen. Like, this is just mm -hmm. a perfect example. Like, I, I didn't want to say it at the time because, like, I was trying to be yeah. very respectful, but I'm like, are they going to blame, blame Travis for this? Like, why? Yeah. But, like, dude, again, like, if you get a massive amount of people in one spot, dude, shit can go wrong and one person falls. It's literally a domino effect, bro. Like, right. you're just going to start taking down people in front of you. Like, I think, what did they say? Like, 100 people died? I have over 100. Dude, that's crazy, bro. Yeah, you know what that's I mean? like and a like, straight up massacre, basically. Right, and no one's to blame besides like, bro, like, fuck, we should have maybe like not let so many people congregate into one space. But besides that, like, unfortunately, it's like 
just fate. Like, you know what I mean? Like right. these things just happen, unfortunately. Yeah, no, it's sad. And I, I thought about that as well, like the whole Travis thing. I'm like, I hope in some way this is a reminder that it, like you said, can happen anywhere and it gives more uh, weight to the argument that Travis shouldn't be held you know, responsible for something that ultimately it's sad to say, like, I think collectively it's everyone's fault, but like who would have predicted it at the same time? You're just, oh, it's busy. We're all out to have fun. But before you know it, it's like too late to even right. get out. So that's the shitty thing is, is, you know, could it really have been prevented when no one expected this? Right. Right. That's what I do. I remember even like when I was growing up in New York city, and then all the some all the winters I would come back to visit my family, bro. The idea of going to Times Square was never a thing, bro. Never yeah. a thing. Because I was me, my mom was always like, bro, like, if something happens and goes wrong, you're just stuck. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So why put yourself in that situation? So yeah. Um, so yeah, recipes to all those people. But yeah, you're gonna have a great time. And I mean, just assuming how that part of East Asia is at this time of the year, it's it should be relatively nice weather, right? Um it depends what's nice for you. It's going to be cold as hell. I think really? like low 40s at oh, night, damn. Okay. like maybe in the 60s during the day. So, I mean, it's not too different from San Francisco, so I'm not too concerned. But coats and shit take up so much space in the, the suitcase. And I'm not trying to wear the same coat like eight days in a row either. Right, so, right. yeah, there's going to be pictures yeah. for sure. Um, <laughs> that's funny, though, because I, dude, I used to go to Thailand every winter when I was a kid. And well, then I ever went to like for four years stretch. I went like every single New Year's. And dude, I feel like dude, I was able to go to the beach and it was like hot. So I I, I, I guess maybe just like where Korea, Thailand is like near the yeah. equator, it's just very different because yeah, I would right. I, for some reason I thought it was like warm all year round in that part of the world. Yeah, geographically it must be different because I went to Thailand, I don't know, six years ago or something. Um, and I'm pretty sure we went around this time maybe a little bit earlier like early october but it didn't there was no you know chill or no dude i, I, dude, I remember being like on the beach sweating my ass off so it's yeah. like i just figured all that part of the world but yeah dude, either way man like it's gonna be fun to go you're going with alex as well and like it's gonna be a vibe bro so i'm, I'm definitely yeah. excited for you man so I'm excited to hear about that trip was you said it's a, a seven day trip um no in total i think 10 days if you include travel nice dude Nice, yep. nice. So this will be our, our last episode for a minute. Then we'll come back and uh, obviously we'll work on some interviews and uh, some new stuff on the uh, YouTube shorts and, uh, and TikToks, man. But let's get to it. Episode one, two, three. Um, excited to be here with you, my man. But obviously I am getting exhausted and I feel bad for you, bro, with the time difference that, dude, it's another text from me you're waking up to of, like this person passed away, bro. And like that shit, yeah. like it hurts me to even have the first like, text you that and then when i look at like i'm like bro this is like the sixth time this has happened you know it just right, sucks. Yeah. but uh for those of you listening when we put this out unfortunately takeoff uh one member of amigos passed away early this morning on november 1st around 2 a.m in houston texas um the vid some videos are circulating i'm sure more information will come out so again we don't want to be um too loose with the information we shared just yet because again that's not you know respectful to the what we're trying to do here but from what we heard thus far and uh, obviously Blair chime in from if you heard something else but it seems that it was a dice game gone wrong they were outside a bowling alley i would say i want to say like around 20 people just playing dice or observing it and just like it just seems hanging out and i guess quavo got into a ruckus and it's Allegedly, someone in Quavo and Takeoff's camp started shooting in the air or just shooting in general to kind of like scare the other group away that was kind of being aggressive with Quavo. And then one of those stray bullets hit Takeoff and he like died instantly, man. So that's shocking in itself. I was also fucking shocked. Again, yeah, he could have been 55. This shit would still be tragic. But the fact, bro, that he was 28 years old really yeah. yo just like made me stop i was like yo this dude was so fucking young mm -hmm. and then you start thinking about and we'll get into that in a minute but like the impact he had with that group dude migos have been around for a good fucking 10 12 years yeah yeah that means this dude was like 16 you know what right. i mean and it just yeah. didn't I, I don't know for me it just didn't resonate bro i literally thought he was older than us like by a lot right. so that was crazy to me bro but yeah how did you 
obviously I know I woke your ass up to that, but like, as you started taking in all the information, how did like, you know, what started coming to your mind? Yeah, I mean, immediately, I think like everyone else who's within the hip hop community or enamored by it, I was just like, again? And obviously, you know, I assumed it was because of gun violence. Um, I, I wasn't aware until later that it was an accident. Not that, you know, it, it makes it any better or worse. I think it actually might make it, at least for me, a bit worse. Because it's like, this wasn't even intended for yeah. you to begin with. So, like, it's kind of like worse as in, like, yeah. more, like, it makes it more tragic for you? I, I feel like it feels more tragic because it, not, I mean, if someone intentionally wanted to do this, obviously, it'd be just as horrible but i think it feels it's almost like the universe didn't mean for this to happen when it's an accident as well yeah. you know um and i don't know i i just almost feel like powerless at, at this point not that i i had power to change stuff like this but you know what do we really say other than like stay home and yeah don't go out if you're a rapper uh, more so a street rapper and Unfortunately, I think the only way this is going to change is if, I guess, the lifestyle of these guys change. I know Takeoff was, like, known to be more chill and low-key. It's not like he was starting beefs and, you know, waving yeah, guns around on IG or something. Like, he kind of like kept any, himself. What anyone ever says, and even this is going, I'm not even, I don't even know what the comments were today because I've been busy with work. But I go back to, like, when he would do performances with like the group at BET or whatever, it was just like, oh man, Takeoff is definitely high as fuck right now. And just like calm, you know what I mean? It was yeah. never like, bro, it was never, I think the most aggressive we ever saw him was in that awkward interview on like BET on Everyday Struggle with like Joe Budden and the rest of Migos and academics. Mm -hmm. right? Besides that, bro, when have we ever heard a negative thing about Takeoff, bro? So that was the right. another part, like it was like, bro, this guy? Like how the fuck yeah, yeah. did this happen? Right, and that's what I'm, I'm saying, it's like, to go back to like whether you know the accident makes it worse it's like he's literally minding his business not doing a thing and then it's like he's the one that goes and yeah. it, it just feels so worse like with the other situations i know not to say that any of them are deserving but people would kind of analyze you know what they could have done better and it sure. seems like in this situation it's like nothing like he yeah. was just playing dice and minding his fucking business so it's, it's it's just crazy that he disappeared that quickly and i don't really know how this can change unless people really change their lifestyle and that's not something you can change overnight like they're conditioned to hang out with certain people and do certain activities like their whole life so how can you mm -hmm. just tell if you try to tell Quavo or whoever, hey, don't play dice at 12 a.m. with a bunch of your homies and some other dudes, like, they're not going to listen to you. Yeah, that's the weird thing, though, bro. Like, why was there... I mean, yeah, so, like, I mean, we, we don't really need to try to dissect this, but, like, I feel like the, what was strange for me is, like, why are you playing dice at 2 a.m. with, like, randoms? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I feel like every time I see people playing dice in the hood or, like, friends of mine or family of mine, it's always, like... Like five dudes who know each other very well. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Like, like even yeah. if a scuffle broke out, it would never get to like more than like, bro, like get the fuck out of here. Like, you're cheating. As yeah. opposed to like, no, I'm gonna fucking kill you. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that. I was like, bro, like why? That wasn't that came to mind. I was like, bro, like how do you even get into an argument over dice at two a.m.? Like, shouldn't those right. people be your friends as well? And again, I don't know if they were just fucking playing dice at a very expensive location, and then like more people rolled up because they were enamored by it, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess, but yeah, what do you do, bro? Like, what do you do? And then right. it's almost like, I think someone posted, the amount of people that have died in the last four years in hip hop is appalling, right? And we're not even talking about the super famous people, but then it's like, who do you go to ask for help when like similar to the Ye conversation, right? When the people who are killing these artists look just like these artists. You know what I mean? Yeah. This isn't like some other community coming in and taking these artists out. It's literally just hate and envy. Again, this situation's set aside because, again, this is clearly an accident from what we've seen thus far. But it's still someone who, like, it was your own people. So, yeah. like, at what point, like, who are we going to ask for help? Like, I, I appreciate the, the the thing I sent you by, I think, like, Keith Seinfeld um, posted something. It's like, yo, like... I get what he's trying to say, but bro, like, if black people and minorities and brown people aren't even going to respect themselves, like, I don't know what else to fucking do. 
You know what I mean? Like, what else do you fucking do? Like, do you, do you literally just go away? Like, you literally just become like a virtual artist and like, yo, I'm yeah. never going outside. Like, I'm only gonna be in my house or if you wanna go see me, yo, come out to Dubai and India and I'll perform for you there. Like, I don't, it just seems like so fucking terrifying to be an artist this day, this, this day and age where like, bro, you're probably not gonna make it past 35. Like, if yeah. your music has relatively any kind of violence in it, you're not going to make it past 35. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then I think what's scarier, too, is I don't even know if you necessarily have to be, like, the most hardcore hood rapper for something like this to happen. For instance, Rich the Kid. Like, I don't mm. see him as someone who would ne necessarily harbor all kinds of beef and animosity. But I feel like he's... he's uh, still intertwined enough to where someone might be jealous enough to fuck with him and, and treat him a certain way. Cause yeah, even just slightly kind of gives off like a braggadocious vibe, maybe has a couple hood dudes he hangs out with. So I think like, again, I, I always bring up the example of like Jaden Smith or logic, but I feel like unless you're just like very detached from it, like that aspect of the culture, like, you could just be at the wrong place and wrong time and somebody will want to do something to you unfortunately and that's what's what's sad about it yeah it's, like kodak getting shot at a fucking justin bieber party it's like yeah. what the fuck why, why am i getting shot here you know right. what i mean like yeah so yeah like where is it safe no for sure dude being a dude being a black hip-hop artist in america is dude i i keep do the, the most fucking dangerous job like, and I feel there's just so much evidence to support that, which is terrifying, bro. Like, like it's almost like if you're really, like, hustling to make it in that field, it's like, why? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, why? Um, yeah. Obviously, to get to your point, you said, like, it, it, you're, the content you put out, like, there are, like, karma effects of the shit you're talking about, right? Like, it's going to come to fruition. But even then, bro, you're like, come on, man, like. It just seems senseless, bro. And again, these guys are getting younger and younger, bro. Like, I thought PNB was, it is tragic. PNB, but he, again, him being 30, 31, you're like, fuck, bro. That guy was a kid. Dude, take off being 28, bro. Like, that is horrendous. Yeah. Horrendous, dude. Like, and Pop Smoke was what, 19? Pop Smoke was 20. XXX.Cion was 19. Uh, bro. Nipsey 33 like bro these are people you would hope like aren't even past like what a third of their life you know what yeah. I mean and like it's just just taken away like that like bro it's just yeah yeah dude it's tragic I, bro and I, I was talking to Chris Kane actually uh today about this and it's like bro it's not even like it's every other month this shit is like weekly you know mm -hmm. what I mean it may not be an artist of like certain levels but like every week bro we're talking about someone got killed Right, right. And it's just like, bro, like, yeah, like it's almost like, like, and like, who do we even go to for help? Because like, if there even even is like still like a hip hop police, like they said there was back in the '90s and early 2000s, mm -hmm. it's like, bro, like, they don't even need that anymore, bro. Because these dudes are just exterminating themselves. Right. You know what I mean? They're like, bro, like, we're, if this really is a problem for society, they're like, bro, like, they're gonna take care of themselves because they just keep doing that, and that's fucking tragic, right. bro. Um, for me, but unfortunately, it just seems accurate. I, no, I 100% agree with that. It doesn't even include, yeah, half the rappers um, of a lower tier that I see right. posted on Facebook. But I think the... Personally, I feel like the common denominator is, sure, okay, a lot of these guys rap about the streets, but I think the other telling thing is, because there's plenty of street rappers who survive and mm -hmm. continue to thrive. I think the other thing is they're not walking around with professional security. I think that's the biggest thing in most cases and unfortunately there's a stigma it's like oh if you got security you're a bitch i mean look at six nine somebody who should be based on the amount of hate he gets be being uh getting his ass beat every single day but he's not and um i think if some somehow the labels maybe i don't know if, if they provide this sort of thing for free most likely not uh obviously so i think if they were able to have some sort of fun to especially their their largest artists because they're most known in the public have some sort of complimentary like security type of service or something that will entice them to actually utilize it sure and maybe they don't want to spend money on it and maybe that could be a factor but i feel like if a security 
uh, or if an officer of some sort was in this situation with offset, let's say, maybe he could have chimed in and, and handled the dude who was talking reckless to, to Quavo or whatever, as mm -hmm. opposed to a homie with a gun with a temper tantrum, you know, just popping off and then killing people. He yeah, like, let me be the hero kill. right now for my boy. Right. It's like, bro, no, bro. Yeah. Like, don't do that. Yeah. No, no, I 100% I agree, dude. Um, yeah, dude, I think what also I was thinking about throughout the day, and like, again, we've, we've experienced this firsthand with like losing loved ones recently, but like, you get sad and like, We'll, we'll, when the time is right, we'll, we'll chop up and look at and dissect the, um, cause thankfully they had a recent interview, Quavo and Takeoff on Drink Champs, where like, it was cool to see like Nori and DJ EFN give them their flowers, which is phenomenal. Bro, honestly, like, it'd be, and I might even ask, a uh, side note, I might even ask my boy who has a podcast with DJ EFN, because, you know, on that, on that platform, like, it's never just like us. The two of it's not never it's never Nori and DJ EFN just talking to each other. It's always a, a right. guess, right? But bro, they've had that show for five years. If you go through their guest lineup and the amount of people who are no longer here because of gun violence, that's also terrifying. Like, bro, that is terrifying. I so didn't that's even like a side that. note. Yeah, yeah. Dude, that's it. I gotta add, I gotta ask my boy about that because in some kind of setting, that has to fuck with you too, bro. It's just like, but. It was cool that Quavo, sorry, it was cool that Takeoff and Quavo got their flowers in that setting. But what it made me think about, bro, is like, I know in moments of that interview, they were talking about that Migos is like no longer, it never could be. And that shit breaks my heart because again, now that you know these guys are all 26, 27, 28 year olds, right? Fuck, dude, what, what could have happened in four years if they all got back together with Offset and like what the future could have been? You know right. what I mean? And it just sucks that like, shit like this will never get the like the happy ending it probably deserves yeah. and it's also like a reminder of like bro like unless someone does you super super dirty and it seems like a lot of the, the beef they have from what it appears I and mean, we're not in it but like had to do more of like clout and money but unless someone does you fucking wrong yeah it feels like you should always try to like mend those bridges bro because yeah we kept getting we keep getting more and more examples how life is just so short bro Mm -hmm. So like the idea of like, all right, bro, we'll talk, sit down eventually. Nah, bro. Like I feel like even more than ever, bro. Like if you love someone and you just like kind of like are just off by something, yo, talk that shit out because they're not, they may not be a fucking next whatever. You know what I mean? We yeah. may not be able to do a collab album in 10 years and look, it's like, bro, we have today. So yeah. that shit made me sad for them, bro, because clearly, dude, they, these guys were together for 10 years nonstop. And then for that just to end like this. You know, I'm sure in the back of their head, ah, we'll, 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 meet. well, even if they said they didn't, I know they probably thought you will eventually make up, and that just sucks that we'll never see that out um, in the public eye. Yeah, no, it's it's unfortunate that it it has to come to this level in order to really be focused on what matters most. Right. Um, and I get it. I mean, it's it's really, I think it's just really hard for people to to realize it until it happens to them. Like right. everyone knows that you could die at any moment. Like it's it's a fact. Yeah, dude, but right. until that until you wake up yeah. to that text from that person you really fuck with, you're like, oh yeah. shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. So I mean, hopefully, at least one person on the planet can use this as a a teaching moment to uh, be grateful for those around them and mend any problems that really aren't that serious to begin with. Um, but yeah, it is unfortunate that the timing kind of panned out this way where, you know, they're kind of broken up. People are picking sides and right. this and that. And then all of a sudden, one of them's not even here to... Uh, and dude, so quickly after that album dropped too, bro. The album just dropped like, I think, two weeks ago. Like mm -hmm. uh, the Quavo, well, the, the Migos album without um, without Offset. Offset, dude. yeah. Uh, yo, your thoughts on this aspect of it too, bro. Like, think about the OGs who did make it. Right. And who were actually out here slinging drugs and getting into crate like dude, the, the Jay-Z's, the, yeah. the Nas's, bro. Like these dudes literally like paved the way for these artists. They have to be just sitting back like, bro, like we helped you make all this money. Like, bro, we made hip hop what it is today. Right. Like I'm thinking about like, you know, like the Larry Birds when we come to basketball, like they never made the money that the people make today. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like you would just 
If I was Jay-Z, and again, I know he runs Rock Nation, he's actually managing these artists to a certain extent, but like, I feel like I would be like, bro, you're making 10 times more I ever made as a 25 year old. Get the fuck out the hood. You know what I mean? Yeah. Change your circle immediately. Like, I don't know, yeah. I feel like if I was an OG, I'd be like fucking devastated because I feel like it feels like you're almost losing a kid yourself, but mm -hmm. also just like so confused, like, bro, why aren't you guys learning from our fuck ups? but also learning from, dude, you can make so much money. Like, if you're gonna treat this as a career, like, yeah. why would you wanna fuck this up with trying to be hood, like? Right, yeah, I don't know what it is. I mean, I do think a, a big reason why we're hearing about a lot more is just because of the sheer volume of rappers we have nowadays. Sure. Like, yeah. everybody's a rapper at this point. Obviously not at the level of, you know, the Migos, but, or PME Rock or any of these other guys, but, there's just a ton more rappers, so we're gonna hear about it more. And then more coverage than ever. More coverage. I don't know how the guys move back in the day, but it seems like, like a lot of these guys are like solo dolo half the time, just chilling in, in places that they Yeah, but guess, all, be. I guess to the, all, to that point, even if they were chilling in a spot that they shouldn't be, unless you see if unless you're an op and you see that person, mm -hmm. Instagram isn't gonna give you the hint that hey, this guy's alone. Yeah. Right. right. So back in the day, like if you were Jay Z just walking through some random hood in the Bronx and you shouldn't mm -hmm. be there, well, no one's going to know unless you bump into the wrong person. Kind of right. Point. Right. Yeah. And you can't just, you know, hit them up on your cell phone. Right. And all this. So there's, there's definitely a lot of factors with new technology and then everybody being a rapper that I think is contributing to it. But I mean, the message doesn't help. I don't know if that'll necessarily solve everything because. As we know, violence, especially gang violence, existed um, well before people were rapping about it. But definitely don't think it helps. No, it doesn't help, man. And it's just it's just tragic, dude. But uh, again, we'll get more news, and um, you know, we'll, we'll obviously put more stuff out um, that we feel is uh, you know viable and accurate. But uh, yeah, rest in peace to take off, man. Twenty eight years is rest way too peace. young, way too young. But. Um, Thankfully, um, you know, a lot of content was given to us and blessed with us. So go check out all the Migo stuff. Go check out the uh, the new album he dropped with Quavo. I want to say it's called Nothing But Infinity Links. Uh, only built for Infinity Links. Uh, Quavo and Takeoff. We got 18 new tracks for them that dropped three weeks ago. So, um, yeah, God, God bless him and uh, God bless his family. Yep. Rest in peace, Takeoff. Absolutely, man. Let's make a, a pivot here, man, and celebrate someone as well. Um, probably not a name that people would think we would celebrate on this podcast <laughs> for sure. Bo, Swifty, Taylor Swift, bro. I don't even know the name of her album that just dropped. I haven't heard one song. Dude, what's funny enough, before this album dropped, um, Apple Music has a similar thing uh, that I found like a year ago that, you know, recommends songs to you. Like it's like Danny's music and it just says, hey, we think you might like this. Dude, yeah. from that period in time in 2019 when I was listening to Taylor Swift for whatever reason that was, and you're fully aware why, yo, a random song popped up and I was like, fuck no, Apple. Like, I want to <laughs> listen to this shit. Uh, but dude, Taylor Swift sells 1.1 million copies the first week out. Bro. It's insane. No one is doing this. And the wild thing is that the last person to do this was Taylor Swift back mm -hmm. in 2017 yep. and even in 2017 i would told i would have told you dude no one is fucking doing this so your initial reaction when you just see these fucking colossal numbers that she's putting out honestly i'm not too surprised i know she like her name is is so massive at this point powerful um, bro. yeah powerful. she's just like uh a super super popular songwriter vocalist you name it um and she's had such a large fan base for, for such a long time I'm, i can't say i'm surprised um more than i am impressed uh that she's able to to do this i didn't even realize she had done it before but the fact that she's done it twice i'm, I'm extra impressed twice and in this day and age where i feel like everyone thought or thinks that streaming is the only way you'll ever get people to even interact with your music you know mm -hmm. right and as far as like why, um, I don't know. I, I feel like, I mean, I definitely don't relate to her music, but I feel like her music is a combination of relatable, catchy, yeah. and I guess 
um, substantive to a degree. It, like it's not cookie cutter, but it's popular and catchy enough to to draw people in. Right. It's cookie cutter and for her. I think she definitely knows for a formula how to yeah. make songs catchy for her. Base. Right, right. But even when I hear it, it's like part of me is like, oh, she's one of the only people that could or is doing this at this level. Sure. Um, and of course, it helps to be, you know, a, a white female within the industry in terms of having a, a broad appeal to sure. the masses like that. Um, I won't chalk up her entire success to that, but I think that does play a, a role into it. But yeah, it um, can't hurt. Yeah, it can't hurt. But songwriting ability, I think, is undeniable. And yeah, obviously, she has some diehard fans as well. And she's been through some shit, apparently, like within the industry and stuff. So I think that adds to the to the feel of the fans, like wanting her to succeed and wanting to hear what she has to say. Yeah, with the whole Scooter Braun situation. Yeah, yeah. Uh, dude, I don't know if this album was that, but apparently like, she's been putting out just re-releases of her music to like own her masters again you know what i mean like because i think scooter braun owned a lot of the original masters right right and so she just i i, I don't know if it was this particular like album, re-recording it or like re-recording oh, okay. it. yeah yeah, I think yeah, I yeah. Heard something like that re-recording it making i think slight changes so this will just you know give her the rights again and have her own her music but dude, what i think was most impressive especially like dude, think back like two years ago dude when you and I were talking about certain artists. I mean, we can say names. I think Nav is still well respected in hip hop. But do think to the lengths he was going to get his numbers up. Remember, it was like if you buy a T-shirt, it counts as an album sale. And it's like, no, bro, that right, shouldn't yeah. count as a fucking album sale. It counts as me yeah. buying merch, bro. Like you know what I mean? Yeah. So the fact, I think the shit that was most shocking to me and just shows. Like, bro, like, if you do have that diehard fan base, they'll do whatever you say to support. Bro, that 900,000 actual physical copies of her album were sold is crazy to me, bro. I did not know that, but that's yeah, yeah, that's 900,000. And I think 200,000 of that to, like, 300 was, mm -hmm. like, vinyl copies. Like, people just wanted to have the vinyl. Because I guess, like, the vinyl market is booming right now. So artists are using vinyl as another way to, you know, push the album. But again, Drake, bro, and we love Drake and we love that some bad bunny, bro. These dudes did crazy streaming numbers, but bro, these shits didn't come close to this. Mm -hmm. Like that's the, that's scary part, but like, just like phenomenal part of this is like, bro, how, like how the fuck, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. like if Drake can't do this, but again, I wonder like in hip hop, there's just like a notion of like, Bro, these guys aren't gonna go buy albums. Just don't. Even, I think dude, Kendrick didn't even put out a physical version of his album. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. which is yeah. odd. So I wonder, like, there's just like a notion, like hip hop and R&B, like these guys, like we're just not gonna support and go to a store to buy it. So just put it all the streaming yeah. platforms. But yeah, dude, the fact that almost a million of those copies were physical is crazy, bro. Because yeah. I haven't, dude. I've never gone to a store in the last. Bro, I think the last physical album I bought was the Watch the Throne, Ye and Jay-Z album. And bro, that was like 2013, I think. Mm -hmm. That's the last time, bro. So almost like almost 10 years ago. So the fact that 900,000 people went out in 2022 to buy a fucking physical copy, that's crazy. Yeah. And I think, I mean, scarcity probably plays a role into it. I, I feel like a lot of these artists, when they're gone, for a long time um that can definitely add to the effect of their comeback um and someone might say you know why is that the case with kendrick or whatever else but i think with someone like taylor swift there's probably not as an uh as much of an abundance of music like that to begin with right um and it's specific to her and everything so i i feel like that fan base is just waiting for it and makes it like an experience i can imagine all these fans listening to every single song having listening parties and all kinds of shit whereas yeah. for someone like drake or whatever not to say that his music isn't worthy of that but i feel like that casual hip-hop fan just you know wants a few bangers you know play it at a couple parties and the story kind of ends there like they're not sure. feeding into 
most people aren't feeding into the the image that deeply whereas with taylor swift that kind of is everything about it like you're not looking for bangers from her album like yeah you're bought into everything yeah it's like you almost want to buy her diary or her book like her autobiography or something yeah no that's a great point man so shout out to her and i haven't heard one second of the album but <laughs> i did actually um you did spotify yeah on the new music friday i i did think it was a pretty good song it was called anti-hero okay um and i don't know i looked at the lyrics because um it's always helpful to get a sense of you know what these artists talk about but it was a pretty clever um description of i guess depression and i think a lot of emo mm. fans would probably identify with it like midnights become my afternoons like that sounds like some tiktoky shit that like would resonate with oh bro, people I'm who, sure who are feeling like shit great on tiktok too yeah so all of the people i've ghosted stand there in the room like when depression works the graveyard shift mm. yeah it's just like the perfect formula for but the funny thing is I'm sh- i haven't even heard this song but knowing taylor swift's music overall like it's emo-y but in the most pop way mm-hmm yeah, you know it's I mean? not like super she, dark. Like, yeah, yeah, it's not super dark because again, they, she's a you know beautiful little blonde girl that has like the voice of an angel. So like, <laughs> she could even try to be emo, but it would never just it would never be that depressing. Right. And I don't know. It's, it kind of got me thinking. I feel like Rihanna kind of has a cultish fan base of sorts, and she's been gone for so long. I don't know if she would necessarily do a million, but I could see her easily doing like if she had uh, a lead up to it especially like 500k like i wouldn't be surprised i don't know bro those numbers are high but again but I, it's only because dude no one was doing this it'd mm. be like if we had three people this year that even that did dude, no one has well, what did this. beyonce do when she last dropped like i think that was a good like barometer oh 300 okay yeah if, Beyonce, yeah, if she only did that then yeah that's you. Yeah, like that's the thing. Like, I don't fucking like. Yeah, I think the streaming numbers were crazy, but actual like digital sales or whatever, like those numbers never haven't been high this year until now. Like that's why I th- when I saw that number, I was like, I think academics has this wrong, bro. <laughs> like, there's no <laughs> way this is the actual number. But dude, I went on Rolling yeah. Stone and it was, dude, yeah, kudos to her. But um, do you know what's funny, man? I think your point about like um, scarcity in certain artists like makes the hype bigger. So yeah, maybe Rihanna will do crazy numbers again we really haven't gotten anything from her what like five six years like her own music i think maybe even longer but bro i remember when i was in college so around the same time you were in college bro she was the opposite it was like dude like stop giving us so much music you know what i mean yeah, yeah. so it's wild how someone's career can drastically just change within a decade it's like we're begging for more because bro i remember like dude she was putting out albums like every eight months it's like, bro, like, how many more fucking pop, you know, like, I don't know. Again, she was clearly ahead of her time because those songs, dude, aged very well. But I right. remember being in the moment, I was like, bro, do we need another fucking Rihanna song? Like, what the fuck is she talking about kind of a thing? Yeah. And, and, dude, if you go back now, most of those albums from back in the day from her are considered, like, R&B classics, bro. Mm-hmm. So that's the interesting yeah. part. Um, so yeah, it, it's just funny how, like, but the perspective of an artist can change with, you know, over time. Right. And I I think Drake's actually one of, that's kind of like his, at least for me, his biggest flaw is that he he kind of always needs to be in the scene. But I think the only reason why it works is because he he's always trying new things and adapting to like whoever's hot that year and stuff. But if he wasn't doing that, I think people would have gotten sick of him like long, long ago. Yeah, but it just so happens he's he'll do like the the London thing or work with Twenty One Savage or whoever's new. And, yeah, and put dude, out he, like if we bring honest, he I mean he's the one that really put America onto Wiz Kid. You know, mm-hmm. like he did that, and then yeah. clearly that's the sound of now. But he put us onto that sound seven years ago, and we're like, oh fuck, this guy was ahead of his time, kind of. Thing. Yeah, yep, yeah, it's interesting. But yeah, shout out Taylor Swift. Uh, excited to see what Rihanna does. So definitely a, a great point by you. Uh, did you hear her song for the Black Panther soundtrack? I heard some of it. Um, not my personal cup of tea in terms of like music to listen to. But... Was it sad though? Because I know it was a, a bit of like um, a dedication to Chadwick Boseman. So I didn't know if it was like a depressing song. 
it was i mean the, the tone of it was depressing I, I didn't really pay attention to much of the lyrics i only heard like 15 seconds of it but um i mean it sounded like her vocals and everything sounded great it's just not something i personally listen to in terms of like my own playlist gotcha. but it was sad yeah 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 i'll check it out i'll check it out um dude, there was so much good music we'll get to that at the end of it that came out surprisingly on uh, last Friday, even though we didn't get her loss by Drake and 21 Savage. Allegedly, someone was sick, so that's coming out this Friday. I'm excited for it. Um, obviously, you'll have some new music to listen to when you're in, uh, in Korea as well. Uh, dude, one thing I wanted to get out, uh, talk about though, again, another situation where things can get really fucking scary really quickly. So on Halloween, I guess, yeah, on Halloween night, um, Diddy, Mr. Love was dressed as the Joker, the Heath Ledger Joker, killed it, looked amazing. I think he stopped Tyler the Creator, and like even Tyler the Creator was like, I don't know what's going on, but I love this. You know what I mean? And obviously Tyler is like a, a fun-loving dude. Mm -hmm. But Diddy was like in the face of like a lot of random people, and one of those random people happened to be a uh, um, up-and-coming actor. People know him from uh, the Power trilogies on Stars. Uh, Michael Ferguson, and he didn't take too kindly to it. And from the videos we saw, that shit looked like it was like a couple steps away from going severely in the wrong way. So your thoughts just on that visual interaction um, with Diddy and that actor? Yeah, no, it's it's funny how you brought that up with things going wrong, because I was thinking about that too. I'm like, this situation could have easily if one of them had a gun or someone around them turned into a horrible situation over what? Like just a couple aggressive. To prove your point? Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, I, like, I, yeah I didn't even know what the point was. Bro. Like, Me neither. But either way, it definitely wasn't that serious. It's not like he slapped his girl or some shit. Um, and even then that shouldn't warrant straight up murdering somebody. But still, um, I'm glad nothing went down. I mean, it was entertaining because I felt like I was literally watching the Joker in a sense. Yeah. Like he was feeding into that. It was like, it was so eerie, but like well done in terms of the acting. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. one second he'd be like aggressive, but then you'd hug him and start cackling and, and then like push him away and be like, yo, blah, blah, blah. Like you better check your vibration and all this stuff. And I'm just like, this could go in any direction at this point. Cause I don't know how drunk either of them are. Right, dude. And I think what helped it not get to that level is that one Diddy does have security. Mm -hmm. So it was very clear that the one guy who was right next to the actor was Diddy's security. Right. And was like very much like making sure, bro, you don't reach for anything. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. So like that was at least and dude, there was like a million people with cameras out. Um mm -hmm. but yeah, bro, but like t for me. Again, growing in, up in New York pre-social media, you're always privy to all the, that you hear about things that Diddy would do, Puffy would do back in the day, and it was wild. Bro, but this felt like an insight to that time, because dude, Diddy just got um, recognized by Forbes a week ago for being worth a billion dollars. Mm -hmm. Bro, what is a billionaire doing acting like that Right on Halloween, bro. Like, yeah. what are you doing? You know what I mean? <laughs> like, even if someone's trying to get in your face, bro, you were worth of this, dude. No one even. I had to. I know the actor from that show, yeah. But I don't fucking know his name. He's just yeah. the guy who was, you know, worked for Tommy in fucking Ghosts. Like, no one fuck. Like, dude. So like, to think that your night can go, yo. Again, I, again, I think it would never. But it was. It felt close, bro. Like, it felt like, yo, this can go very bad. Yeah. Um, and again, we know he has the fake gun. And But again, dude, if that guy's drunk, he doesn't know what the fuck that is. And then God forbid something happens. So I was just like, bro, like, Diddy, like, fam, you're the one lecturing all of, like, the younger generation of, like, be smarter, be smarter. Bro, yeah. you can't be doing this, bro. Right. I think the problem, I mean, it's just really an ego thing. Like, these guys get money. And then, and then, you know, maybe security guards as well. And they just kind of feel the need to, or the, not even the need, the, um, they feel the ability to lash out without any repercussions because they have security and shit on, 
each side so they can talk crazy and then on top of that i think they they also want to prove that they haven't changed and like don't get it fucked up i'm i'm rich but i'm still hardcore and tough even though i'm like 53 years old yeah yeah or like or maybe even further like i don't give a fuck if i gotta pay 10 million dollars on a lawsuit like i'll beat your ass just to prove a point um so it's unfortunate that that a lot of these guys i mean they don't really practice what they preach i think um and i get it humans are humans you know if someone pisses you off enough you might just forget uh yeah you, hey, just, you might just forget but yeah to your point dude like it was funny how like he get he kept going from like diddy who is mad to the joker right. like dude he was hugging him saying right. it's okay i love you bro <laughs> yeah. was like, bro that's what, what made it it made it like scary i was like what's gonna happen like <laughs> Yo, what's going to happen? Yeah. It's like, bro, you're putting your arms around this dude who's like, bro, don't touch me. I'm just mm-hmm. like, bro, I've seen that. I've seen that video too many times. You know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah, dude. So, again, shout out to Diddy. Shout out to Michael Ferguson that nothing happened and people de- de-escalated the situation. But, bro, that was, again, I thought we were going to wake up to a scary thing from that situation, bro, because I was like, fam, what yeah. are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, unfortunately, I think... We say this literally every single time, but this isn't the last time something unbelievable is going to happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But hopefully we only get positivity for the rest of the year, bro. Hopefully we can end the, uh, God really knock on wood, we end the uh, the year in a right note. But um, yeah. I know we had a couple of things, bro, but again, I don't want to, you know, the yay stuff is playing out the way it needs to play out. We'll let that breathe. Because um, sometimes I feel we're giving him the attention he, he wants for like not for nothing. Um, is there anything else you want to touch upon before we get into some Heat of the Week? No, I think uh, we should be good. Awesome. All right, so this week in Heat of the Week, uh, no video breakdown. We really want to do a deep dive more on the content. Uh, we'll bring that back, though, next week. But uh, for you, Broski, what was the uh, – any one or two songs that really had you uh, vibing this weekend? Yeah, there's there's one song um, by an artist I've been following for some time. His, his name is Spence Lee, uh, Spence formerly Lee. Shada Spence. Um, dude out of Jersey, I want to say. Um, I first saw him on World Star because he was posted, and he's, uh, I believe, an Asian American rapper. So, obviously, always intrigued when I see people within hip hop who aren't the stereotypical, you know, black dude or whatever rapping about the same thing. So, especially when they reach a certain status, right? And he's like genuinely good too. You know, sometimes people may say, "Oh, this artist only." Was getting attention because they're they're not black or whatever right 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 um as you know like the mac millers and whoever else a lot of these guys are genuinely super talented and he recently released a song oh i actually saw him at uh that one festival head in the clouds the 88 rising oh so you just saw him almost sorry that was like a month ago yeah well that wasn't the first time i heard of him but uh okay. that was the first time i had seen him like perform live or whatever nice um uh, I don't even think I necessarily saw him live. I saw him on the screen because we were fucking late. But in any case, <laughs> this song is fire. Uh, it's called On God. Um, in terms right. of the vibe, it's it's like a melodic trap beat. Um, I think some pianos in the background. And in terms of the, the concept or theme of the song, it's, it's really just, I guess, overcoming hardships and being determined to make something of yourself in a nutshell. A very good uh song to bop to super impressed with it uh in terms of like the songwriting and melody so i mean you know maybe this will be one of his his songs that'll blow up but i played it multiple times uh nice. ever since i first heard it i think last week so i'm uh, feeling good about this one nice already added to the playlist i'll definitely keep that myself tonight uh for me dude like it was good there was a lot of music that came out on i've been bumping the fret again house album that i sent you non-stop bro like, oh yeah yeah non-stop like bro like four of those songs will be on the wedding set like nice. has to be bro but I'm honestly I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep it hip-hop and um an artist that uh, i feel like uh just adam brought him up i feel like selection always talks about this guy um dude spino spino's Spino. album love for rent dude flawless body of work bro like i was super that's right this is the first you know because i only heard like a couple of songs here and there on like different playlists but this is the first body of work that i've actually sit through and uh and thoroughly enjoyed by him um the song that stood out the most for me 
Uh, besides, obviously, the J. Cole feature is fire, even just having J. Cole on that, on that, in that setting. But uh, for me, it was a song with Krusa called Luforia. Bro, super melodic. Yo, vibey, bro. Like, that song, you can be smoking and just play over and over and over and over again, bro. Like, nice. yo, repeat on fucking infinity. So, yeah, definitely go peep that if you haven't. Uh, already added both to the playlist, but uh, Smito and Spencer Lee. Um, yeah, man, great, great songs that uh, we both enjoy this weekend. Um, all right, Broski, anything else uh, before we get out of here? Nah, let's uh, wrap it up. All right, bro, let the people know where they can find us. Let's get out. People at audio theory.com on all streaming platforms, including TikTok as well. So, blowing up on TikTok, that. blowing up on TikTok. Get in early before everyone else. Um, Yesterday's price. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You could be one of the day ones complaining about how everyone hopped on our nuts like two years from now. Yeah, already. yeah, yeah, yeah. We want you fighting in the comments with the new people. That's fine. We'll support this behavior. <laughs> um, and speaking of, go get your merch before we blow up and no longer have the classics available. Correct. Um, especially because I don't think these styles are going to always be available regardless. So Facts definitely get these uh before it gets too cold this winter um yeah outside of that we got some interviews potential interviews we're working on before the end of the year um obviously we'll be you know brainstorming some new ideas for content and, and such uh but other than that i'm feeling good about 2023 i think we've learned a lot this year with all the things we've been experimenting with so it's only a matter of time yeah, dude. I, I totally agree. I'm excited, especially. I think what helped the most is that at least, what, three months ago when I was able to buy into TikTok, right? Because mm -hmm. it helps yeah, me yeah, understand, yeah. you know what I mean? Because, right. like, like, if this was five months ago, I'm like, bro, that's cool. Like, you posted on a right. thing that no one cares about. It's like, yeah. no, dude, that's the thing. So like, <laughs> right. so, like, that really helped me understand, which is why, like, when I saw, like, bro, every time I log into our page, I just see, like, you know, notifications that I'm like, oh shit, like, dude, like, mm -hmm. we're blowing up on the platform that you really need to be blowing up on right now. So that was cool. Right, for sure. And I, I think originally, too, even when we were both kind of first starting out on that platform and thinking of ideas, we, we felt like we were obligated to do like corny TikTok dances or like skits and stuff because everyone else who was right. growing up was doing that. But I think now we realize we just need to condense our hottest moments into you know 15 seconds or whatever and correct uh people will resonate with with us more because I, I mean as you know i don't think many people nowadays feel like they have an hour to to spare even if they like somebody. three minutes you know yeah. <laughs> right like even the people i love and follow like i can't i just feel like i can't watch any of their shit for like two hours straight I know, dude. But that's when that's when you know, like you've made it though. Because I, dude, I listen to, I have a sports podcast. I listen to mm -hmm. like three times a week, bro. And I listen to the full hour and a half three times uh -huh. a week. You know what I mean? Like that's dedication. Yeah. So like, again, but are I know you multitasking? Bro. Like, are you cooking and like? Yeah, I'm at the gym. I'm driving. Okay, but like, I'm still making the effort that like, yo, I'm hitting play. Right. And okay. you know, I'm getting hit with all the ads. Like, you know, I'm very much helping their, you know drive their revenue stream so yeah right. hopefully we'll get there one day uh but we definitely appreciate everyone that's been fucking with us from day one and uh again this is only the beginning bro i'm super excited uh i appreciate everything you do to help us along the way my dude so uh love you and uh i know we're gonna love talk beforehand but have a great and safe trip in korea and uh yeah we're gonna be off for a week but uh we'll be back uh better than ever when uh, my boy blair gets back yes sir peace bro peace